so this section of the program is devoted to um, the core team at the Getty and the initial contributors, and we've asked each of them to uh, make some remarks. We're actually going to start with a virtual. We should have done him by WebEx or something. We didn't think of that. Um, our friend Max Marmer, who used to play guitar with me when we were at UCLA about 400 years ago, um, <laughs> Uh, who is now the distinguished president of the Crest Foundation, he was fully planning to come, and then a health thing came up just in the last couple days where he wasn't able to, to travel. So we're really sad not to have Max here, but then Kathleen was like texting him last night at dinner saying, why don't you send a, a virtual uh, statement? So Kathleen is going to read a few. As I mentioned before, Max was really instrumental in this project uh, uh, getting started because he funded our initial meeting with our partners. So Kathleen's Max, Max, okay. Oh yes. Yep. Hello. Um, <laughs> Max is he he entitled his talk Baedeker and Art Bibliography: Thoughts on the Getty Research Portal. The idea that children should be seen. Oh okay. Well, is this yeah okay? I'll put it here. The idea that children should be seen but not heard goes back, like so many memorable if controversial sayings, to the Renaissance. I don't know whether the same is true of the opposite sentiment often applied to orchestra musicians, who, we are sometimes told, should be heard but not seen. But I do have it on good authority that both sayings should apply to foundation pres presidents, who <laughs> should ideally be neither seen nor heard. <laughs> As you know, I tried to live up to that expectation by not showing up today, but was nonetheless asked to share a few thoughts in absentia. And since a trusted IRS representative informs me that private foundations are required by both the regulations and the rules of good manners to respond to such requests, I feel I should try to say something useful. I have just had the pleasure of reading a forthcoming study of digital art history, a branch of the emerging digital humanities which one could argue has yet to be either seen or heard. This study, undertaken by Diane Zorich on behalf of the Crest Foundation and the Center for History and New Media at George Mason University, focuses on the perceptions of art historians and the limiting factors that have so far kept digital art history from making assuming its rightful place amongst the digital, digital humanities. Now, as it happens, this study calls for, among other things, information portals that will help the field identify notable efforts in the digital art history arena, much as the Welcome Getty Research Portal helpfully points us to the ambitious digitization efforts of key art research libraries. At the same time, it is now clear that, however essential they are, neither digitization efforts nor the invaluable pathfinders that direct us to the results of such efforts are enough. And that is because the field of dreams theory of the digital humanities, digitize it and they will come, is, a demonstrably, is demonstrably bankrupt. They will come only if they become engaged with such efforts as contributors and as users. But let's slow down for a moment. Who is they? We need a new generation of scholars, teachers, and students, as well as a new generation of art librarians to partner with us in, this per, in the pursuit and eventual practice of digital art history. And that means that we must create incentives for scholars, teachers, and students to engage with and exploit the results of our digitization efforts, much as we must create incentives for all manner of individuals and institutions to contribute to these digitization efforts. What might this mean for the portal? I suggest that it means a few things. First, it means that we must be sure to help users bring reasonable and informed expectations to the portal and the digital resources to which it directs our attention. What is, the, what is it a portal to? Clearly, it is a portal to the digital efforts of participating art libraries. But will it take me to a critical mass of, say, full text versions of early architectural treatises? Anatomical treatises, early works of antiquarianism, early treatises on painting, perspective, or optics? Now, we typically measure critical mass in such contexts by reference to standard bibliographies of early imprints, such as those found in Schlosser and Chikonyara. And so I would advocate that these standard bibliographies be built into the very fabric of the portal to which they could provide structured browsing capabilities. They are, after all, the Baedekers, the essential guidebooks to at least part of the new terrain we are trying to map and eventually to colonize. 
Second, I believe the portal should encourage individuals and institutions, both large and small, to contribute content. It is not only our great art research libraries that have important works in the literature of art, nor only they who wish to play a role in building the digital public art library of the future. The same is true of myriad smaller libraries and special collections, as well as many individual art historians and bibliophiles. How can we encourage and facilitate their contributions? I would suggest that one way would be to highlight what has yet to be digitized. And once again, the best way to do that is to build into the portal our standard bibliographies so that we can identify what has and what has yet to be scanned. And then we must create tools that allow potential contributors to adopt a book, much the way green organizations now routinely adopt a stretch of highway. If we can find a way to help them secure digitization services, perhaps through such initiatives as the Internet Archive, all the better, since such services may well be an essential on-ramp to the new art information highway for both individuals and institutions. In any case, once again, we need the indispensable bibliographical Baedekers as guides to that highway. Clearly, the traveler who is too wedded to his or her Baedeker will miss many wonderful sights, and that was true even when Baedeker was toiling in the field. The same is no doubt true of our standard guides to the literature of art. And those skeptical of canons may well feel that invoking and depending even in part on our standard bibliographies will simply reinforce outmoded ways of looking at the literature of art and result in a digital art library of the past rather than one for the future. But I would suggest that such bibliographies have a key role to play in developing and colonizing the portal, even <coughs> if ultimately it evolves in ways that the Baedekers of the literature of art could never have envisioned. Thank you, Kathleen, and thank you, Max. We'll be texting you at lunchtime. Um, uh, Stephanie Wood mentioned this, and Max also alluded to it, this idea of the individual contributors. And we already have a model for that with our, voca with our vocabulary databases. There is a template, an online template, where you can contribute one record at a time. Uh, normally, the way we build up these uh, resources is by huge batch loads of records, which is what Joe Shupatowski and Laney have been working on up to now. But there's no reason why we couldn't also follow that model of the vocabularies and develop some kind of a template. Again, it's not magic. It's real hard to do to get that metadata template to then feed into the database. But it is something we can look at. Um, we're now going to hear from the rest of our um, uh, initial core group, we're, uh, starting with Carol Ann Fabian, who is the director of the Avery Architectural and Fine Arts Library at Columbia University. Carol Ann. Thanks, Martha. Um, and thanks to you all for having us here today. Um, first and foremost, congratulations uh, to the Getty, uh, to its leadership, to this organization and the technical team um, for this extraordinary achievement and particularly the remarkable work uh, that has under, been undertaken in such a short uh, one year uh, development cycle. Um, yeah, well, yeah, and, and the push to the end in the last three months. Um, at any rate, it, it is uh, an awesome beginning, and I am honored and thrilled to be uh, part of it at its uh, beginning and intend fully uh, to be a robust contributor as it, as it grows in the years to come. Um, I, I want to just uh, step back a little bit farther than this one year of development to say that I think it was um, March of 2010, so two years ago, that uh, the Getty, together with uh, Max's support from the Crest Foundation, uh, gathered a group of uh, librarians, uh, scholars, curators, and other uh, involved constituency in New York, uh, and then subsequently in a series of, I think, about six meetings um, over the course of a year in various parts of North America and Europe um, to discuss the question of uh, art, art literature, bibliography, and a digital future, and what that might look like and how we might uh, look at that together. And I think those discussions in large part um, helped the Getty team and those of us who served as their um, collaborators and advisors in the course of the last year uh, to conceive of what might be necessary. But um, two thrusts came out of some of those meetings that, that I think bear repeating, although they're um, completely obvious, I'm sure, to everyone in this room. Um, and one is that in those early phase conversations, uh, the scholars in particular uh, described two use cases, two ma manners of work 
um, with considerable variation, as you can imagine. But <laughs> at essence, uh, one, those who wish to work in a very broad interdisciplinary um, pool of literature and who, who sought the cross cut of um, I'm interested in this particular point in time and all of the ways that we, all the lenses we can use to look at that particular point in time or that cultural moment. Um, and then there are the scholars who had a much more um, committed interest in the deep and narrow. I'm interested in this. I only want to look in the art historical literature, and that's my point of departure. And I think the digital universe, from a uh, stewardship point of view, those of us who are stewards of large, um, significant collections, historical collections such as the Averys, um, you know, have a responsibility to answer to both of those mandates. And so the academic uh, community has responded in ways um, to create digital uh, environments, large pools that are heterogeneous in nature. Um, Internet Archive, Hathi Trust, even WorldCat um, has links to, to digital content that is across the board multidisciplinary. So the idea um, that grew out of this project and that we began to refine and hone and, and uh, made terrific sense to me is how do you find the part from the whole? Um, and then how do you throw that part back into the big pool when you want to extend your search even broader? Um, which led us to a number of experimental um, uh, projects and uh, resulted in the minimal specification that we gave Joe and then he expanded on in brilliant ways um, for what the portal might look like. Um, and so why does Avery continue to have interest in this and why does Columbia University indeed have interest in participating in this way? Because our commitment at Columbia in particular, um, I can speak to, uh, has had that very broad focus on the interdisciplinary because of course it's a large system. We have um, 23 units within the Columbia University libraries, only one of them dedicated to art and architecture, the best and biggest, but um, <laughs> even so, you know, my voice, uh, you know, is one of, of, of 23 different divisions. Um, so the importance of collective uh, action by my colleagues in my discipline is the stronger voice that I um, wish to exercise in, in within Columbia and then within the uh, ARL, the Academic Research Libraries of, of the United States uh, more broadly. Um, and that collective action is both a responsibility, I think, that we share um, to our shared Cult, if you call it our cultural heritage together. We all have incredibly deep um, and interesting collections. We all have very duplicative collections in large part. Um, some people could approach this as um, a collection analysis project where you start looking at your analog collection and say, what do you have and what do you have and what do you have? And do we all have the same thing? And is it an annotated? Is it a clean copy? What edition? Someone remarked today about uh, books that are published iteratively, uh, the same exact book, multiple printers within the same year, but they then become a different publication because it was a different actual publication. So those sort of questions of selectivity um, come to bear in ACES when you start talking about digitization, where the costs of doing this work are enormous. Our methods of work, our workflows are highly different depending on our institutional um, capacity and, and uh, the culture of the place. Um, and so in order to reduce duplicative effort, um, to find broader economies of scale and to uh, support a more optimal population of a disciplinary portal, those are kind of the drivers for why um, me as leader of Avery uh, become involved in an activity as this. Um, we have done digitization over the years. They have responded to um, more programmatic or thematic uh, requests from our constituency or um, from partnerships with other institutions. Um, we have not taken a systematic approach where we start in row one and go through. Um, we have uh, digitized from our rare collections, which um, are millions of objects. We have digitized from our research collections, which are a million um, objects. In a fractional amount for all those many millions of things, and I'm only one library within one institution in one country. The enormity of work to be done is extraordinary, and we cannot afford, in my view, to work uh, singly. We need to work in this collective and highly collaborative manner. So um, the demonstrations or the cases that our scholars uh, presented this morning demonstrate how they would use the collection as a research environment. 
I think for those of us who are stewards of collections, we wish to use the environment as a decision support environment, as a way to work better, more efficiently, uh, and more effectively together to um, build a corpus that is useful to the scholarly community. So um, I would say, in view of what the challenges are to doing such a thing, um, the portal ha has uh, passivity right now. I mean, we can interact with it as a point of discovery, but we don't have a way to use it uh, as in full-featured full uh, manner as we might like for decision support. So for me to communicate effectively with any of the institutions here or, or those that you represent um, about what's on deck for you, what do you already have in flight? I don't want to start that project again. I need to use this as a touchstone to come back to the portal and say, aha, I see. You know, well, Frick, I, I know because they're just down the street, but <laughs> somebody out in Oregon, what are you working on without having to uh, mediate that discussion to be able to see who's planted a flag? Um, Max suggests the idea of working um, from a bibliographic intellectual framework, which can act as both a uh, discovery mechanism for browsing a collection. It can also use, uh, be used as a checklist for work that needs to be done or has been done. Um, interaction and knowledge and what I learn from a scholar every single day when I interact with them uh, at work or in settings like this is invaluable. How do we do that in the most effective way? So that discursive space, whatever form it takes, um, to me is a new cha a challenge and an opportunity um, that the portal can help us achieve as a community. Um, one of the other questions I think that um, comes into play here is how doing work collectively, someone mentioned earlier the question of standards for data and standards for imaging, um, working more closely with colleagues in other institutions helps us develop more efficient work workflows and it helps inform the generalized workflows at a place like Columbia to specific targets that we wish to deliver. For the Avery contribution, um, in the portal that's released uh, today, we selected only materials that are um, currently exposed through Hathi Trust, although they're also available through CLIAR, our local catalog, through WorldCat. Um, but we did not harvest out the things that are available in Internet Archive, which are um, substantial in web archiving. They are um, also things that are fall more into the ephemera side of the house. I did not select anything from our visual materials. I did not select anything from our millions of architectural drawings. I stuck pretty much to a meat and potatoes, um, art and architectural history and theory pre-1923. You know, I went by the recipe book. Um, but we have, you know, a wealth of things. So coming together as a group and deciding what are the things that um, are noise in the system and what are things that are um, critical and central and prioritized to do um, and make the search and discovery and access experience for the users best are the things that I think draw me to um, a project like this and make me uh, totally committed um, to its success. Um, and as a last thing, I think that uh, one of the challenges we will have as a, um, an advisory group to the Getty development team um, is this question of policy and um, prioritization. Um, this will undeniably be magnetic um, to people in our field, happily, very happily. And so how do we prioritize that um, flow of data that will come towards the Getty um, to be aggregated, it will be, um, I have pr prior experience in large aggregation projects. I used to work at ArtStore, which does a very similar thing for imaging, of bringing data from um, disparate organizations together in one place. And it ain't pretty. Um, <laughs> even though all those organizations are, are working um, in a standards-based environment, um, the data they produce, and Joe can attest, uh, still comes in, in um, uh, very different forms. And so the work of making that uh, merge and mesh in a way that produces a uh, useful search result um, is very, very challenging. And so that, that work of setting up uh, what are those uh, standards and, and prioritization um, criteria, I think is going to be exciting work. And as I say, this collective action is the only way we're going to get there. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. And you know, it is important, as you were pointing out, that the portal was always seen as a tool for both the researcher and the librarian. Um, so, and, and we have a lot of, 
important things to discuss in our advisory meeting tomorrow about all of these issues that you've raised. Uh, the next representative from one of our contributing institutions is Deborah Camp, who's the Chief of Collections Management and Access at the Frick Art Reference Library. Uh, just to keep Max Marmer's spirit alive, he refers to her, to her as the Debbie Kemp goddess. So let's hear from Deborah Kemp. <laughs> That's a little bit hard to, to move into, but yeah. <laughs> thank you anyway, <laughs> Martha. Um, I would like to just um, pr propose a few points of observa observation, rather casually actually, um, that reflect the Frick's decision to contribute, um, why our, what our reasons were, and, and a bit about what our experience has been so far. Some of these points have been already made before, but I think there's value to emphasizing them, if even just to, um, to um, accent the collaborative agreement here on, on points of, of, of what the portal um, holds for its potential. So let's start with some simple pleasures like for instance, um, liberation from microform. <laughs> so possibly the world's most unloved um, scholarly format. So, um, so while the chikognara on microfiche is in, you know, in very, it's undoubtedly a wonderful tool, um, just think having it at our fingertips. In fact, we don't even have to imagine. It will happen. It will be there and it's going to be terrific. Um, and similar to that in a way, we'll also have liberation from um, potentially at least from some of the subscription driven um, closed access collections that have been built by um, that have been built and created by profit driven publishers um, which have varying degrees of added values quality and um, services um, not to be critical I, I would add that the, the Frick has actually partnered in some of these publications with um, great success and in good reason um, but we have always maintained non-exclusive agreements that um, whereby we retain the ability to, at some point, um, provide access to materials that are in the public domain um, after a mutually agreed upon time period, and we intend to do so. So we see the portal as yet another um, place, as actually an ideal place for us to further our mission, which is to, to give the broadest possible access to our holdings through, through many, many um, areas of uh, venues of, of research. Um, the digital versions of the of von Schlosser, Chico Gnara, and other classic bibliographies, of course, make perfect sense, but really, they should just be a starting point um, and a chance, the portal offers a chance to move beyond them. And I think that they're, uh, even while restricted to public domain materials, there's a tremendous amount of um, expansion that can be um, made on those um, classic collections. And, um, only by opening up this portal to, to a multitude of contributors can, can we do that. And of course, I said the Frick wishes not only to make <clears throat> wider access to its collections, but a main reason to, to join the portal rather than just offering them through, through our own website, for instance, our own catalog, is to put them in contact with other virtual collections worldwide. I mean, Max mentioned Baedeker's, for instance. We have a lot of those, actually, and uh, we could put together a, um, once in context with other collections, it would be a wonderful, um, complete collection there. Um, I would say that the, the small test file we sent, which is of something we're called, we call Gilded Age New York collections, is a wonderful case in point and could, could um, easily be imagined how we can build up from a regional collection into national and, and beyond collections that reflect publications during the Gilded Age and that are in the public domain. Same goes for auction catalogs, which was mentioned by one of our scholars. I would add things like salon catalogs as well. Um, and we need international partners to do that. Um, we also see the portal as a way to facilitate our decision making. And it will offer an entry into um, these complete assemblages from collections that could be from the very large, well-known, like Yeni Shah, to, to very small institutions that may just have a, a small collection of, of um, important works. I should mention also that the Frick has very limited funds for digitizing uh, our retrospective co um, collections. And so we really need a collaborative tool to be able to make this kind of um, decision making and the ability to micro curate our collections. Martha asked to discuss a little bit how it, the experience has been any um, problems we had with contributing our records, I, I could, should say that 
um, Joe did all the work, it was very easy for us to, to just send a simple MARC file uh, off to him and see these wonderful results. So I, I think that there, there won't be high obstacles for other libraries to, to contribute the way they've um, been inclusive in the kinds of data they can accept and work with and use their expertise on. I would um, hope that for the future, and this was, has been brought up before, that tools should be developed for creating and curating collections by librarians and by end users, and a place to suggest um, titles for editions or even to um, have contributions from, from users in the field. So finally, I would just uh, remark that I do foresee a tool that will be welcomed by scholars and librarians alike. Um, Ithaca SNR, which is kind of a think tank based in New York um, for the educational community, has done studies that, that, that um, assert and, and prove that there is still a, a need for scholarly communities uh, online as a place to meet. And I think that some of our case studies have demonstrated that. Um, you, there's still a, a, a need for a, a place to go, a portal to enter um, for our um, scholarly art historical based community. Um, beyond that as well, I mean, but um, certainly for, for people that are looking for a certain type and quality of, of data. So finally, I would just say that uh, I think that the, the portal will serve this need, and I really thank the Getty for its foresight and for its substantial investment thus far in um, spearheading this, this exciting um, new development. I think it will be a major contribution to, to scholarship in art history and to a, a multitude of other disciplines as well. So thank you very much. Thanks, Debbie. Our next speaker is Martine Poulin, who is the library director at INHA, which is the French National Institute for Art History. Martine. Merci. Thank you very much. Um, a few words from the other side of the ocean about the portal. Um, why did we participate in that project? Uh, my only answer is because we were invited to, and we are grateful <laughs> of that, of course. But uh, I must say also that, you know, uh, all the history of our recent digitized library is history of cooperation. When we try to build uh, our policy regarding what we were about to digitize, the, the cooperation was, of course, already the <coughs> only issue. And for librarians using public or philanthropic money, we have to be, of course, careful of it to use it for the largest benefit of the users and of the scholars' research. And we know also that art libraries are often small structure, uh, that the field is uh, wide, but also uh, limited and well uh, uh, known, not well known, but well uh, understood. So uh, of this uh, uh, difficulty can also come a strength, a strength by being uh, working all together. So it's true that the art domain is a teeny one comparing to others, but also it gave us more ability to be unified and to feel a sense of solidarity to each other. Because also we can think that regarding the printed documents, uh, the, the scope is not so wide. Once a French scholar was telling that uh, the pre-old pre regime, pre-revolution, a uh, number of titles regarding the history of art would be, uh, for him, about 10,000 titles, which seems to me a little uh, minorized. Uh, Thomas once told that altogether the number of titles useful would be about eight, um, uh, 80? 80,000 80, titles. So we, we, we are sometimes not very... Um, we have sometimes small units, but the field is uh, circumscrit, uh, can, can be, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> so uh, it, it's true that if we cooperate, it can take only uh, ten, 10 years more, not, not really more, to, to embrace the, the field. Of course, not everything, but uh, a part of the field. Um, I will come back to the fact that, uh, which has not been mentioned, that already the portal is only, if I can say, which is already enormous, about the printed 
documents. And that, of course, if we want to go on, there is a notion with all other document manuscripts, archives, drawings, prints, and so on. And this is also very important for the, for the users. And if we can, we, we should go on after on, on these type of documents. So one of the reasons what, which, for which we were very much interested in cooperation that is that cooperation is the history of our digital library. We began about uh, six, maybe eight years ago, and as uh, you know, we have a, a, a large uh, neighbor who is the National Library of France, who had already much more experience in, in, in digitizing with Gallica and also now Gallica in Europeana. And we had to cooperate to see what could be our place in this already uh, uh, constructing libraries by the, by the BNF, for instance, also because we share the same buildings. So, of course, we, we have to, to cooperate and to do that together. As I told, our strength is that we are specialized in history of art and they have to, build, to deal with all the, the knowledge possible, so it's much more difficult. But we, we really cooperate title by title during years and years and years. And we decided to, to share the, the field. For instance, they did periodicals, they digitized periodicals. So we never digitized periodicals uh, during six or, or, or seven years. But we, we wanted to have an identity, to build also an identity of Ayen Nietzsche and of his documents. Uh, by constructing this uh, digital library. So we began our program of uh, uh, the idol library of historian, uh, uh, the classical of history of art, a sort of uh, ideal library for scholars. What are the titles they really need uh, frequently every day? And I must say in French, because one of the difference between all my and our partners and friends, you will recognize our Gallicanism here, is that, uh, or our modesty, maybe more, that we, we digitize French. And I must say it's enough for our happiness to have to digitize uh, French literature. And uh, so we began about uh, 1,000 titles first. 17th and 18th century, and then 19th century titles regarding you know, the, the classics of history of art. And always we, we have always the, one of the interests of INHA is to mix scholars and librarians. So we always uh, made the list with the scholars and tried, to, of course, to, be, to answer to their, uh, to their needs. But during these first years, we had to compare title by title to the National Library. And four years later, I said, never more, never more. Because, you know, it's us, the digital world, of course, now is so large that it's, it's as if you were comparing, uh, you want to do Les Mémoires d'Outre-Tombe de Chateaubriand, uh, a publisher, a print publisher will never compare to uh, Gallimard, will never see what uh, an American publisher is doing. It's finished. I mean, it's finished. So. And we didn't want to be within the choice of comparing title by title and not cooperating at all. So we had to progress, uh, and the, the portal is a great progress for that. And uh, within the, the French area, we began to, with the National Library now, we have larger agreements, and uh, we shared uh, uh, corpuses. You say that, corpuses? Mm -hmm. For instance, for the sales catalog, that I know, uh, I know how the the hope is important in the scholars uh, towards the sale catalogs. We decided that they would do 19th century until 1914, and we would do uh, from our collection, of course. That means not everything, but a good part. And we would do 17th, 18th, and from 1914 to 1942, because we have the chance at the copyright law. Uh, is uh, closer than often for you, so we can go until uh, 1942. And we, we try to do that now, to, to share, uh, you know, by large corpus. And also now, uh, in the portal, we have about uh, only 1,300 books which have been shared in the portal. But of course, as you all, we have about 13,000 documents which have been uh, 
uh, digitized because all other things than, uh, as I told, that printed documents and so on. So the things are going up now because our cooperation with the National Library leads them to take about 2,500 2, books each year for, from this year to the next one. So we will quickly uh, arrive to a good amount of books. This year we are doing the museum catalogs. Uh, so nearly uh, 2,500, and each year we will change for the, uh, the genre, we will change category of books, uh, monographs, artist monographs, uh, exhibitions, and so on. So uh, both of us, we, we will have uh, 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 an interesting collection, but also, of course, cooperation with the national level and we were happy to launch last December a national program for the Library of Art. So we, they were invited to, to present projects that the National Library could help up to 70%, which is not bad, in digitizing periodicals. So we have just chosen about uh, 33 projects of uh, digitizing periodicals all around uh, France. <coughs> and uh, so this will also... Uh, nourish, nourish, feed Gallica and, and the art history. So the, the cooperation is getting more organized and this national program will also be continued during four or five years and each year we will change of type of material regarding printing documents. So about the portal, we were of course uh, very much uh, uh, honored and pleased to participate to it. It's a great realization. I'm sure that it will make research more easy for the scholars and cooperation easier for the librarians. I had some example, of course, which are good for me about the use already done of the few cat sales catalog that we put in, uh, in our digital library of the catalogs of the Louvre, which has, of course, a great richness. We have uh, digitized about all the catalogs of the Louvre. In fact, near, uh, at that time, uh, 40, 450, 40, <laughs> 450, it makes more than 400. And uh, so it's, it, it's useful. Of course, as everyone, we all, when you have an offer, you say, oh yes, but we could have this, we could have this, we could have that. Of course, Joe, you know that. Mm -hmm. But uh, also for us, uh, gathering the, 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 the harvesting were very easy because you did everything. So, and my staff a little, I didn't do anything. So thank you, Joe. Uh, just constating the, the, the result, which is uh, great. And of course, you know, the, one of the, uh, of course, two facets are requested by the people uh, um, of my staff that has been uh, uh, trying the portal, the, but saying that the facets actually are great, but maybe one by discipline itself, archaeology, uh, you know, sculpture or something, and maybe one by century would be also useful for, for affiner the, the research to make it thinner. So, but it's easy to tell, and I know how much you've been uh, not sleeping at all during all these last months. And uh, of course, regarding bibliographies, we, we were in the group, we were very eager of that part of the project, which, uh, if I understood well by your silence in these last six months, is very, very difficult, much more difficult than the one we thought. But the day we can, uh, of course, uh, we have been, for instance, digitizing the whole collection, and this is one of our numerous links with the Getty. We have been digitizing the, the sister, the first sister of uh, BHA, which was uh, created by our founder, Jacques Doucet, Le Répertoire d'Art et d'Archéologie. It's about 450,000 records. And uh, of course, the, if this, it, it's online uh, on our website, and of course, I would like it much more used than it is actually. So we have communication to do. And of course, it's also concerning uh, uh, copyright documented, but it won't be for the whole, uh, the whole eternity. So there are, it could be once uh, useful for, for the bibliography. And of course, the, the scholars in INHA are doing, uh, there is about uh, nearly 30 specialized database 
on bibliography of architecture, on archaeology, on everything. And all this is often concerning, you know, un uh, unprotected document. And it could be also, we can propose also this tool of specialist database to contribute uh, more to the, to the portal. So thank you very much. And I hope we, we go on during at least, let's say just 10 years. It's already <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you, Martine. You know, the idea about the different facets and categories, we've put a lot of thought into it. And uh, that's another one where it ain't pretty, but um, we'll figure something out. Um, finally, we're going to hear from Ken Son Soner, the, who is the chief librarian at the Thomas J. Watson Library at the Met, who this is the first time we've, we've met. It's about time. Uh, Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Um, when when uh, Thomas offered his, off, uh, his opening words, he uh, shared his enthusiasm. And I've rarely attended a professional conference that has, that has been more palpable enthusiasm and, and optimism. It's really more characteristic of a, of a, a christening or a wedding or another <laughs> positive, <laughs> positive rite of passage than a professional conference. And I think uh, that dis, uh, distinction makes it most, both memorable and, and very uh, important. Um, I also add my thanks uh, for the vision that made this uh, happen and also for the technical support that made it possible to Thomas and Joe and everyone else who was involved in this. Uh, it's, it's very well done, and, and uh, we collective you, uh, collectively thank you. And that's a, that's a big we and a big collective that offers its thanks. Um, it's, it's, uh, it was just a couple of months ago that Kathleen asked if, uh, if uh, the library at the Met would be interested in participating in this, uh, in this effort. And um, of course, the, the immediate answer was, was yes, of course. Uh, we've been working with digitization projects for um, a couple of years now. And these projects, of course, start, with, start at zero and really don't get interesting. Zero meaning zero objects have been digitized and really don't get interesting until there's a little bit of, um, uh, till the content begins to develop and we're, we're in, 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 a, in a rich and varied way, and we're right at that stage. And, um, and of course, we didn't uh, digitize this material uh, for the sport of it. We, we digitize this material because we're committed to making this material accessible. Um, this is something that is in absolute, uh, in absolute alignment with the uh, mission of the Metropolitan Museum as a whole. It was just uh, during the past year at the director's mandate that um, more than 350,000 um, good records, um, all with images for accession works of art, were uh, put on the museum's website. And, uh, and there are a number of other digitization projects um, that the museum is engaged in, which um, uh, I hope we'll be able to uh, uh, celebrate soon. Um, Th uh, Thomas also mentioned that this is a bit of a, um, not a bit, it is an, a, an utopian effort. And I think that's, that's a good thing, uh, that it's a utopian effort. But I also see it as, as part of a tradition of, of, a, of an effort of, of universal bibliographic control. It wasn't many generations after the invention of printing that, um, that scholars and, and others put themselves to the task of trying to make sense of this material, try to order this material, and with this, with this um, endearingly nutty idea of, of perhaps even being able to enumerate this material, to, to, to try to create a corpus. Um, we heard a little bit about um, the, uh, a, um, a corpus or a canon uh, through Max's remarks um, about um, Schlosser, for example. Um, that, that, uh, that may or may not be a good idea. I think it needs a lot of discussion. Um, everyone has their, has their favorite bibliographies, after all. Um, I prefer the one that was put together in 1870 by the South Kensington Museum, now the, now the v &A, of course, uh, which was a listing of about um, 65,000 titles and, 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 and emphatically international in effort. Uh, it too was a collaborative effort of 400 international collaborators, uh, and um, and um, and the text describes the the effort 
as putting together a, a list of books, a bibliography that would make a library perfect. <laughs> Now, and if that doesn't, if that doesn't underline the, um, the sense of utopianism that's characteristic of this, I don't know what does. Um, but but I, I do want to see this in, in, as, part of a, as part of a long tr uh, tradition. Um, art libraries have worked, museum libraries in particular, have worked um, very um, successfully at cooperative projects. The Scipio project, uh, which was a, an effort that began in 1980, to take advantage of the new emerging bibliographic um, databases and begin to put our auction catalogs under some kind of bibliographic control. That worked very, very effectively with the Met in Cleveland and uh, Art Institute of Chicago as early contributors. And now the Frick and, uh, and, um, and the Getty and the National Gallery of Art, active contributors to this database. But, but the portal here, of course, uh, it's essential to remember, is, is more than a, a list. It's more than a uh, enumerative bibliography. Uh, what makes it transformational, of course, is that we're getting, uh, we're getting full text and we're getting, um, we're getting full text of important, um, of important um, um, art historical works. Um, I find it, I find it um, uh, worthy of some thought that the what the, what the portal has addressed is a certain kind of um, disorder, a certain kind of chaos and dissonance. These materials, it's important to remember, are available through numerous sources or silos, whether it's Google Books, Hathi Trust, Internet Archive. There's a very long, long list. And what the, what the portal has done has, has added a coherence has taken away the discord, and, and it very much seems that it's, 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 it, it will be not only a productive place to work, but there's, there's an element of, uh, of fun and discovery to it, which um, I, I think we could all agree just doesn't exist in those other silos. So I think that's very positive. Um, during the break, um, I exchanged a few words with, with Thomas, and I said to him, well, it looks like we're really getting someplace. And he said, yes, and we'll get there together. And I think it's important to understand the, the coordination between, uh, between um, scholars, librarians, um, content providers, those who are active in digitizing this material. Um, we're lucky that we don't necessarily have to collaborate because collabor collaboration, of course, generally means that, that an organization has to change in one way or another, and that's where things get bogged down. All we have to do, and this is the good news, is coordinate. And coordination, I think, uh, is something that's, that where uh, we have a long tradition of, where we, we have the, uh, the, uh, the skills, the aptitude, the inclination to do this, and I think that the, uh, that the, uh, that the results as we've already seen, uh, are very po uh, positive and, and, and perhaps um, to say that this will transform scholarly research, perhaps that this isn't um, over-enthusiasm um, or hyperbole, uh, it might very well be true. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. <laughs> lead a little bit of a discussion and then we'll break for lunch and come back at two, but Johanna? Okay, well, first of all, thanks all of you for uh, insightful and provocative and interesting comments. And um, I, I wanted to pick up a little bit, actually, where Ken left off with this uh, contrast between collaboration and coordination. And I know that for each of you, um, you are involved in institutional decisions on a daily basis. There are tensions pulling you in all directions, and there are always um, you know, limited resources. And so decisions have to be made that prioritize some agendas over others. And I'm wondering if you could just uh, talk a little bit about the way in which, um, as this project scales, um, you might advise, um, you know, sort of reflect on what's going to be involved in, in helping to negotiate between that coordination and collaboration tension, thinking about your own home institutions and the kinds of digitization projects you're involved with, and where will be the sort of pull to sort of, you know, 
prioritize things that might have this kind of, um, you know, contribute to a, to a collaborative project versus, um, you know, sort of uh, home agendas that might foreground special collections or unique aspects of what your holdings are in ways that benefit um, your own collections development. So I'm, I'm wondering if you just think a little bit about that. I'll answer briefly because I can see my colleagues would like to answer as well. I don't, I don't necessarily see a conflict between our, our home agenda and, and, the, and, and what we could offer here because I'm confident that the home agenda would work on material that would be relevant to this, to this, um, to this portal. <coughs> and um, <coughs> and I, I, I also think that um, there will soon be many eager sources that want to contribute their digital uh, resources to this project. And, and uh, this project is going to need a kind of you know, administrative structure and a gatekeeper and, and just the, the, the day to day nitty gritty of, of organizational life to make it work very effectively. We should keep our, our, um, our enthusiasm during this process, of course, but I think that's, that's very much the next in, uh, inevitable phase from my perspective. I think that may be more true for the institutions whose holdings are more exclusively focused in the area of art history. And again, I, I look at you, Carol, and think about the complexity of, of your holdings and diversity. Yes, either within Avery or within Columbia University Libraries as a whole, um, which is mind-bogglingly large collection. Um, but even within Avery, I think um, the, the project is really um, helpful to me in decision support. And I, I, they've heard me ad nauseum talk about decision support um, because we have so many choices within Avery and within Columbia. And, and I, I will be a placeholder for other similar large academic collections who have the same uh, set of uh, problematic decisions in a way. Um, we do have resources. They are not limitless. We have collections. They are exhaustively large. Um, so we do have to make decisions on a daily basis about what we do. Many times our decisions about digital projects are driven by local uh, needs, uh, scholars within our, you know, our immediate constituency. Um, other times they are because of collaborative projects we're doing on a thematic basis. Um, other times they are partnerships that you know administrators high above me um, you know are making with other institutions. We have at Columbia a very strong relationship with Cornell University, um, and so collectively we make decisions that influence what I can do or can't do locally. Um, so those things are constraints. But I would say having um, <coughs> a, a committed uh, participation in a project like the Portal is. Um, a positive uh, element. It adds strength to my argument um, to do Avery work because it contributes to this larger international um, collective. And that's why I say collective action, I'll add that to the C's of collaboration and cooperation, um, collective, um, as a group, together we'll get someplace. And the more I can differentiate why my contribution makes a difference. So I look for that differentiating factor, I think. You know, what can I do that you can't? Um, and there are things. Um, and those add um, weight in my, my you know, whole laundry list of, of uh, decisioning um, criteria. If it, if it really impacts and helpfully impacts what can be done in this collective, then that's a reason for me to do it. Um, the other thing that I think uh, this project um, does is adds an additional uh, burden in a way to our technical team at Columbia, which is large. Um, and talented, and we have a long history of collaboration with the Getty um, because of the Avery Index to Architectural Periodicals, which uh, Getty supported um, uh, for about 23 years, I believe, until most recently, the last couple of years. Um, but at any rate, there's this, an understanding among our technical teams, the Getty team and, and the people at Columbia, about how our backends uh, interface, um, which is very helpful, but we do not currently have a workflow that isolates um, art and architectural content from the whole within Columbia. So always making that uh, a data element for us in a digital project so that they can easily extract that data from our larger uh, bibliographic holdings and send a stream of that over to, to Joe's um, receivership uh, <laughs> is a change in workflow, but one that I think I can fairly easily argue for on the strength 
of the collective action here. Deborah, did you want to say something? Yes. Um, I, I think perhaps um, Ken's point, and he can correct me if, if I'm mistaken, but is not so much that it precludes collaboration, but that it, um, it gives the option of, of doing one or the other. Um, if someone doesn't, if an institution doesn't prefer to cherry pick and just wishes to, to push out everything that they have digitized, they have that ability. But for those who might want to be more uh, selective, it will be a tool for doing that, which is, which is wonderful. And it will be up to the home institutions to decide, you know, if they do want to duplicate um, texts or if there are certain criteria for doing that or, or value doing that, it will be a, uh, an individual decision. And the other point at which I think is wonderful is that there will be kind of an organic collaboration that will just happen. And this is the best kind because it doesn't require um, formal agreements or, you know, saying you do this while I'll do this. It will just happen. I, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up, Joanna, and which is the, um, we looked a little bit today at uh, different presentations from the different contributing institutions into reading environments. So we looked at Internet Archive, we looked fleetingly at Hati, um, we looked at Ayana Cha, um, and the, it's very, very interesting to hear from the community of users um, which environments are most useful um, to the kinds of work they're doing, um, which accommodate most um, post-production interaction with the objects, you know, where you can do some, some text analysis perhaps or data uh, grabbing. And so when we see um, via the portal, I'm, uh, we didn't talk today about you know, how we're going to gather uh, usage statistics or you know, understand better how it's working for people other than hearing great stories. Um, those sorts of, uh, the knowledge we'll gain from that will influence decision making also about where we put we have certain obligations to repository, they go in a certain place. But for use, if the scholarly community says, we really prefer the toolkit that's um, available to us through Internet Archive, that would influence our also making a second tertiary you know, or, or fourth contribution into that repository um, for a certain class of content as well. So it's um, all those things yeah. really, really help us uh, make these decisions. I mean, all we want to do is be useful. That's all anybody here wants to do. Um, so the more we learn from each other, the better off that is. I'm going to let you have the last word then. I think we need to break for lunch. And uh, we'll be talking more about um, envisioning the future, tools, repositories, and uh, what's ahead. So Great. thank you all, and thanks yeah. everyone on the panel. We'll reconvene at 2, and thanks to our librarians and our scholars for a really interesting morning. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.